All right, so the other day I was looking back at some of my very first street photographs and I thought of this video where I go over some of the photographs from my first year of street photography and critique them and just give you guys some feedback as to what was going on in my mind then versus how I would, you know, maybe take the photograph now. Just a warning, I was a terrible photographer and so you guys are gonna see firsthand, you know, everything from when I first started shooting street photography. Now before we jump into that you guys, drop a like and also hit that subscribe button down below for more street photography content and also if you guys want to do some more street photography critiques on this channel, please drop a comment down below so we can possibly, you know, get a video together for the next couple weeks. But with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Here is my first year of street photography. Okay, before we drop in the older images, let's give you guys a little baseline as to where I am at now. I'm gonna pop up some images on the screen here of some of my recent work. Now, as you guys can see, I have gotten a little bit better. I don't consider myself, you know, really, really good or an expert or a master whatsoever. I, I feel like I still have a ton of learning to do in terms of street photography and a lot more things that I need to experience before I can even tap into any of that. Even though I do have a lot to learn, I think I definitely have improved from when I first started shooting. Now, a little backstory, I shot mostly black and white film and the reason behind that is because with black and white film, you needed to focus more on composition. You needed to focus more on story, on the light. And if you take that color away, you can really just focus purely on crafting an image. You're gonna see some photographs here in color, but you're mostly going to see black and white images because again, like I said, for the very first year, I just shot HP5 and Tri-X all day long. Okay, so here is the first photograph. This was from April 19th in 2014. I remember this one. This was in front of a barber shop. The main subject here is the guy sweeping. Now, I thought this was like a classic link image, someone at the barber shop. Um, you know, sweeping just in a downtown area. But looking back at it now, man, this is a terrible image. First things first, I like the color, weirdly enough, it's very 2014. Um, I guess you could say I subframed the subject in the frame here, but I didn't do it successfully. I didn't do it right. When you use a subframe, you're supposed to draw attention to that subject. And in this particular scenario, I don't necessarily think I did that. I didn't include him enough in the frame for him to be, you know, the main focus and attention. It looks like I just kind of photographed a storefront. Um, if I wanted to remake this photograph, what I personally would do is I'd get closer to that window, maybe take it as like a very flat view and just isolate the subject. The more simple, the more better. Yeah, you can see that on the left side here, there was no thought of composition, a lot of clutter, just a garbage can and all that weird stuff, trees and stuff in the background that's very distracting from the subject. And so, yeah, I mean, as my first street photograph, I'll just say it, it sucked. <laughs> all right, the next image here was shot on Portrait 400 and the Minolta X700. And I remember this vividly because this was taken in Berkeley, California and in this alleyway I saw this gentleman speaking on the phone and I remember walking past him and I saw it and I pulled my camera to my face and I made the photograph but a couple of things to note about this photo first things first he is not the main subject of the frame why do I say that if you look at the composition the leading lines from this alleyway lead to the car. And if you are trying to use leading lines in your photograph, your leading lines need to have a payoff and it needs to be the main subject of the frame. So I failed to use the leading lines to create some type of line that can lead the viewer to the subject, which was supposed to be the guy on the phone. Rather, it led to the car. So that was the first mistake. Secondly, he's only in one third of the frame. He's only on the left side. And the reason for this is because I was terrified to pull my camera up to my face and photograph someone directly. Why was I terrified? Well, one, I didn't want to get confronted. And two, I just thought it was weird to point your camera at somebody. In this image, it really shows that I lacked a lot of confidence and confidence in just my camera as well as in just my ability to make street photographs. Had I had that confidence, rather than pointing the camera here, I would have pointed it straight directly onto the subject. And you know, obviously this is a given. This was my first year of street photography. I took this probably two months in, but this photo is a big telltale sign that you know I just lack the confidence to make photographs on the street okay so before I show you the next image you guys it is a black and white image I want to talk to you guys about why I only shot black and white mostly for the first year of my street photography like I said earlier it was because of composition and uh, you know it really helps you know developing the eye for street but it was also because I was very very heavily influenced by three of my most favorite photographers Vivi 
Ian Meyer, Gary Winogrand, and Henri Cartier Bresson. Those were my three big inspirations that got me into street photography. And so a lot of what you're going to see is gonna have some type of influence and uh, I'll point that out as we continue on. All right, so this image right here, you guys can tell the subject of this frame was the guy reading the newspaper and then just whoever was at that bus stop. And this was taken at Market Street in San Francisco. You can tell because of the little bus, um, the bus stop in the middle of the road. <laughs> but again, you guys, this shows a great lack of confidence because rather than pointing my camera and directing attention to our subjects here, I just took a photograph of the frame. I was afraid again to point the camera in their direction. Here's another photograph of a man wearing a suit. This is in Sacramento downtown. It's, again, I lacked confidence to just photograph the guy. What I would have done and what I should have done was I would have gotten nice and low. I would have maybe stood next to one of those uh, newspaper things and photographed him directly. Maybe, you know, from a top down angle, maybe he looked into the, the lens and he's like on the phone and he's like, what are you doing? I think that would have made a very interesting image because he has a very unique look in himself. But I didn't do that. I lacked the confidence and I just, I just made a random photograph of this guy on one third of the frame. It doesn't even follow the rule of thirds. Okay, so moving on over into this photograph. So this one, I did capture this person looking at the camera, uh, but this was the first image that ever gave me confidence in making street photos. Now, this photo was taken in Seattle and uh, this was on the Nikon F3. And I remember, I, I pointed the camera, I said, you know, why not? We are in a different city. Let's just go out and let's go for it, man. You know, what am I scared of? I made the photograph and the gentleman looked at me and he said, did you just take a picture of me? And I said, yes, I did. I sure did. And he said, okay, are you a student? You know, what's going on? And I explained to him that, you know, I have this really deep passion for street photography it's something that I am currently working on and uh, you know I love the way you look and just the way you're reading your newspaper so I decided to just take a photograph and he said that's really cool he admired what I was doing he said he was a photographer back in the day so he completely understood but it was this photo that gave me a lot of confidence and he was super cool about it and it made me realize that you know it's not as bad as it seems to be confronted sometimes it can be but for the most part i think people are more understanding if you just explain yourself now this next image was taking on a roll of film called roly vario chrome it was a slide film and it gave this really unique warm green tinted you know kind of look this is lady in bus this is one of the most famous images in my portfolio i gotta say man i got really lucky with this one we just got off the bus we were on the way to a thrift store somewhere in seattle and as the doors were closing I saw this scene, I saw the light. And the first thing that I remember was, man, the light is gorgeous, it's peeking through, it's about five o'clock. This person is just so calm and somber, just reading on the bus, on maybe on the way home from work or something. In terms of composition, I wanted to make sure that there was some type of symmetry, so I planted her somewhat dead center of the frame. I made the photograph and the rest was history. And it was after Seattle that I started to really focus more on composition. And I wanted to start incorporating more leading lines, more geometry, more shapes. And so when I went back to San Francisco, this was one of the first images that I made back and it's of uh, construction workers working underground in tunnels. Uh, and this next image here was in Walnut Creek. Now this was the butterfly man. There was construction going on and there was this big tarp and it had this like kind of wave of butterflies and a wavy design of butterflies I wanted to incorporate the uh, butterflies into a composition and so I figured this one little stretch was a nice little part where it was almost a direct leading line a diagonal leading line going to the bottom and I knew that all I needed to do was wait for the right subject so I set my co my composition up I waited for the subject and I probably shot about 20 frames until the perfect subject walked through the frame here is a pair of lovers in San Francisco this was when I was studying a lot of Gary Winogram. Uh, another image of an off-centered uh, horizon. The gentleman here was, I think he was pulling out like a pocket square and then he had a fedora on. A lot of the street photography I was looking at were from like the 50s. So I, I always photograph people in suits, people wearing fedoras. And so it, it just gave me that sense of like, okay, that's the type of street photography I like. That's what I'm going to, you know, photograph. But hopefully from the past two images, you can tell that I have gained that confidence. I was able to comfortably go out, take photos of people out on the street and uh, put them in center frame. And so this was no like no other, just a dog hunched over the side of someone's shoulder. Uh, here's a photograph from the side profile. I like that the dog was looking at me during the photo. Next one here was at the Point Bonita Lighthouse. This was taken from a reflection of a puddle. Now, a lot of people don't realize that once you look at this image, this is just an upside down image. So if you flip the image over, you'll see the real image here. And it's two people walking away from a puddle. 
This next image here is two suits, and uh, this image was famous for being at Union Square. This one was really where I was dialing in my composition. I think this is where I was taking less photographs of people just head on and just trying to learn how to use lines to my advantage. Uh, and so I was always looking down and I realized at one point that at Union Square, they have these two crosswalks that meet at a point. And if you look at them, they're in like this perfect V formation. And so I waited there for a very long time and I finally got two people wearing suits standing perfectly in line. And so the image was very symmetrical. There's a lot of nice leading lines going on. The contrast of the black suits to the um, gray kind of sidewalk or crosswalk, I should say, it all kind of tied together. All right, guys, so there is a look into my first street photographs from my first year of street photography. Street confidence is a real thing. When it comes to making street photographs, you can tell how confident you are based off of the decomposition of your images. If you compare and contrast some of the images that I take now, versus how I was photographing in the very beginning, you could tell that I was genuinely scared. I was afraid. Honestly, that is okay. You know, you're just getting started. But Brisson had this quote that stuck with me till this day, and it was, your first 10,000 photographs are your worst. You're going to gain that confidence, photograph after photograph. There you have it, guys. There is a critique of my first year of street photography. I hope you all enjoyed it and took something away from it. And I hope that it opened your guys' eyes to you know, just how bad I was when I was getting started. So I encourage anybody out there who may be in a rut or just aren't happy with where you're at to just continue pushing on until you reach where you need to be. That's gonna wrap it up. Comment down below what you guys had for your first year of street photography, what you guys think you could have done better, but that's gonna be it. I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, Minolta Gang.